it's funny, backstage, Nina was saying, Donna, you're always so happy. And I was like, what's not to be happy about? We're talking about fashion and shopping and style and red carpets and how to like shop at three in the morning uh, without any guilt feelings. Guilt, haha, -ha, get it? Um, I get it. Like, what is not to be psyched about? That's true. We're not solving any world problems. Nor do I want to, right? <laughs> Neither do I. Enough. I think so too. You know? So first of all, September. It's a super, super, super cool app. How did you guys, you're an advisor, you're the brains. That is true, I hope. Sometimes I am, oh, I guess. She is. <laughs> um, but I really got the inspiration for Project September back during my time at Guilt. I was watching how people were discovering shopping in a whole new way, and it was largely taking place across social media. So there were millions of people talking about brands they loved, products they loved, pulling together beautiful looks. And we wanted to build a platform, essentially, so that they could upload, whether it's a makeup artist, an editor, um, top uh, celebrities, stylists, you name it. They could put up their beautiful looks and for the first time, almost as a resource to their followers, say, these are the brands I love and here's where you can buy them. So you'd be able to buy Nina's look right now. Exactly, and we will post it later for anyone interested. <laughs> so Nina, how did you get involved? Um, you know, I met Alexis. We've known each other from the industry. And um, she, we were talking about the concept of Project September and what really excited me and excites me about the app and about the site. It's that it's the closest thing to experiencing a digital magazine. It is very curated. It is very stylized. It's very inspirational. But at the same time, it affords you the immediacy of click and buy. So it's a combination, right? It's a, yes, Instagram is wonderful, but this is a more curated version of that. And it feels like when, I mean, I'd love just to browse and get inspiration. And then if I want to shop, I can shop. And if I want to communicate with my followers, if like you, for example, see me today and you're like, what are you wearing? I can immediately communicate, well, this is what I, I'm wearing Gucci or I'm wearing Prada or, so it's a, it serves many purposes for me. I get inspired, I get the opportunity to click and buy if I want to go shopping, and it affords me the opportunity to communicate with my fans. And you guys have a really, I think, cool cross-section of influencers on there, like Nicole Richie for the youngsters, the millennials, I guess, the whatever. Uh, Christy Turlington, who's like the coolest and then you're one of the advisors. How did you guys come up with the list of people? Well, I originally reached out to people who were doing really interesting things and people that I saw as innovators in their own areas, pe people who were embracing technology or entertainment or coming up with their own lines of product in very cool manners. And I wanted to give a platform where they could almost put forward their work, but in a new way to uh, our audiences and others that um, come to Project September and allow them to almost show the way for others. Like here's how we personally have chosen to use this very creative platform. We think of it as immersive visual shopping. I mean, you can really, if you go on to Project September, you can look directly at Nicole Ritchie's feed and go image to image of her collaborations, behind the scenes, what she might have been wearing backstage at an event, um, and so it's just a very cool, completely visual approach to how you discover fashion. And you will see as you go through, there's actually no written word on it virtually. Don't you remember the days when you had a magazine and you used to like rip out the pages and take them to Saks or Lord & Taylor and be like, hey, do you have this? <laughs> I don't know what it is, well, but do I you do. have it? Those were the days. Those were the days. Not fun days, but those were the days. <laughs> These, these guys were like, what? Yeah, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Tearing, down a, tearing out a magazine? <laughs> well, it's, shopping has become entertainment in such a way. I mean, it doesn't start with, I need a shoe and I want to get it. And it's still so grounded in what um, the magazines do so well. They, it, they put forward product in, in beautiful looks, and I fall in love with it, and I want to know what it is. And I might see it on someone else. I might spot it on Instagram, but it's entertainment, it's a process to determine what you're gonna buy, 
And at the end of the day, it doesn't happen in a moment. It builds over time. And so many people are playing an interesting role in it today, including the magazines um, at, that are still paramount and, and most uh, central in, in driving that discovery. But it is such a process. And the nuance is now that we are always shopping. And we're always d looking towards it as a type of entertainment. Sidelines of a game, the taxi ride, between meetings. It, it, before you go to bed, it's just become such a big part of where we spend our time. But, you know, to go back to the days when you would tear a magazine and go shopping, I think that putting together the way that we work producing a magazine, putting together a magazine has also changed, right? So now it's really, it's not so much about shopping, but it's about giving you a curated vision of what the season is like by giving you photography that is very stimulating and very and, and perfect you by, can't recreate that digitally you can't for exactly the most part. by giving you journalists that are deep thinkers that are going to give you a an article that is very well thought out and it's not just you know fast so in a way i compare the magazine experience on a couture level and the online experience on a ready-to-wear level. So it's a really, it's, it's a different process. And I think that the way that we look at magazines is different now. It takes more time. It's the luxury of time. We're going to take a magazine when we have the time to spend with it, right? Whereas online, we're constantly engaged. So it's a different, it's just a different relationship. For you, what are the top items that everyone should have in their closet right now? Oh, my God. I think that, you know, I get asked that question so many times. I even wrote a book about the hundred pieces that every woman should buy. And, Let's and, take it down to, like, five. And for me, they haven't changed. They really haven't. These are real, you know, classics. The little black dress that you can take from the office to the weekend, from, I don't know, the party to the funeral. Really, it's one of those very... It's true. It's very... It's very versatile. Um, a white button-down shirt. Again, the office to the weekend, to the beach. It's just one thing that is, it should always be in your closet. For that working woman, it's a tailored jacket that gives you that presence of authority that makes you feel like you're in control. Um, a high heel pair of pumps. And the most democratic, and I think, the, you know, I think that everyone should have a pair of denim jeans that fit you and that you feel comfortable and great in them. For both of you, how do you decide when to buy something? I mean, that Gucci skirt is fabulous, and Gucci is not a cheap brand. So what goes through your head when you're really going to invest in a piece? What do you look for? Oh, my God, that's a great question. Yesterday, actually, or not last week, I wore this skirt, and there was a straight man in the elevator, and he was like, I really like your skirt. It's like some dude, like, I really like your skirt. I was like, this must be a really good skirt. And I said the same thing to you. <laughs> I don't get those compliments all the time. Um, I think that, you know, you have to have an emotion about what you're buying. But I also think, especially when you are spending on the luxury level, you want to know that that is an investment, that you are going to wear it, that you are going to use it for a period of time. And I think what Gucci has done so well is that they're, you know, they're saying, we're going to give you this collection and you, it's going to live in your closet and it's not going to go on sale. You can wear it this season, you're going to be able to wear it next season. And if you decide to resell it, you're also going to get mm -hmm. something for it. So it's, it's the value of that. I don't, you know, I think that's when you're buying a luxury item, you have to think about how long is that item going to be able to live in my closet and what am, how long am I going to be able to use it for? What about for you? What goes into buying something? Well, I unfortunately have a big tendency towards impulse purchase. For the most part, it works out um, and was certainly something that I furthered quite a bit that habit while at Guilt and now at Project September. I, I have my list of basics that I kind of go in and repurchase year on year. Um, but for me, what's been really fun with this whole emergence of street style is, and when we saw a huge explosion around what's now Fashion Month, um, but Fashion Week for sure here in New York on Project September, but you seeing those specific um, items start to pop up everywhere. That to me has been a part of what I've brought into my consideration of, oh, I got, 
I need to add that. I need that rocker tee, or I need the um, that uh, patent leather Isabel Morant skirt that people have worn in a hundred different ways. And I think that's been for me such a fun way to discover fashion. And, and it's it's real. It's 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 a little bit more gritty in that it's not so polished that you know you kind of identify what you might look like as you're running across the street for that coffee. And so it's been a really fun way to discover and shop for me that I've kind of incorporated into what goes into wardrobe decisions throughout a season. And we all live in New York, or at least the three of us, where closet space is at a premium, I think for most people, unless you're Mariah Carey, <laughs> um, which we're not. How do you decide what to purge? Or do you purge? Or do oh, you I, just... I think do you really? purging is so instrumental. I think every season... You before, oh God, I hate to sound so conservative and, and safe, but before you go out and buy something, I really do believe that you should take stock of what you have in your closet. If you haven't, the rule of thumb is if you haven't worn it for over a year, get rid of it, donate it, gift it, resell it, whatever you choose to do, and then you decide what is it that I'm going to invest in? What is it that I need? And what is it that I'm going to buy that's going to keep me that's going to make me current, that it's going to make me on trend. Um, but I think, yes, when the seasons are changing and you're about to get into a new season and buying cycle, that's the perfect time to really take stock of what you have. And you? You're like, I don't well, purge. Well, I, I do because, I mean, one is some of the stuff that might be your old favorites, just they should remain old favorites and you should retire them. So there's certain things like that leather jacket that you just every year, a couple years, just through wear and tear, got to reconsider. Um, but unfortunately, it's some of the more trend-based stuff that kind of goes in and out faster, less so than that kind of go-to black pencil skirt. So it all depends. But definitely those beloved items are sadly some of the things you got to turn through the fastest. And before we go to the audience, I wanted to get both of your guys to comment on what's ahead, what to look for on the red carpets because we're hitting Oscar season or the lead up to Oscar season, I should say, with all these crazy how, award shows. How exciting. We get to see all these beautiful... Oh, ones. more mermaid gowns. <laughs> Yay. Um, what do you guys in, predict, envision, or what would you like to see? This is really your all area. Right. Well, so uh, I could add a little, Nina. but this is really happy. Nina's area. I think, you know, in the hair and makeup department, I've, I think that we have seen a shift more natural, right? It's about enhancement. It's about the pop of the eyebrow or the lip, if that's, you, you're the, you know, it's not that caked or masked look or the very coiffed hair, but very relaxed and natural and all about enhancement. In terms of the fashion, I think that, um, you know, yes, black is wonderful for the red carpet, but I know that, you know, the actresses now know that color really stands out in the red carpet. So I think that we're going to continue to see a lot of color. Um, and metallics are always, I think that we're always going to see either the silver, the bronze, the gold. It's just, you know, it's very sophisticated and it's, it screams evening. Um, and really, in terms of fashion, it's moving into a very feminine, delicate, sophisticated aesthetic. And like I think what Emma Watson wore last night. Correct. Valentino, Dior, it's going very pretty, very feminine, very delicate. And I think we're going to see more of that come 2017. On Project September, who are the top designers that people look for? We have, I mean, with the whole emergence of like Coachella and festival style, oh, that know. has been something we see a ton of, frankly. God help um, us. We, it's like a return <laughs> to the 60s. Um, but beyond that, I have to say, we have almost everything gets posted from red carpet to mm -hmm. front row to street style around these big fashion moments. And I can say with certainty that red... I mean, Valentino was on to something immediately. If we have something in with red, it has four times the number of views. It has four times the number of click-throughs out to see what it is, where can I buy it. The, the you know the purchase red, huh? I would have just skyrocket. Don't you love to hear this intel? I love. Like I want to hang thought, out with her. I would have thought like basic black or dark brown would have been my guess. No, it's red. And there was this skirt on Project September that took off. It was all over. Um, the, it was all over street style during New York Fashion Week and went on. It was this um, patent leather red Isabel Morant skirt that had kind of like a fun pull to the side and tie. 
I saw it worn 30 different t ways, and but yet it went back to the same theme, like it's all about red. If you want people to get engaged online, put red and they will immediately go there. I tell you, somewhere Nancy Reagan is just smiling down, right? And let's go to our audience, please. For those of you who don't remember, Nancy Reagan wore a lot of red. <laughs> Hi ladies, thank you for being here. Congrats on Project September, it looks awesome. Nina, as a super fan of Project Runway, I have to ask you, you've been a judge since the beginning. Congrats on the 15th season. Thank you. The show has had such a major impact on the industry, has given mainstream exposure to fashion designers. Are there any particular designers or moments from the show that have left an impression on you? So many moments in the show. I mean, they have been such seminal moments. For example, when... Um, Oh my God, we've had so many. Uh, the moment when Mondo um, really came out, I asked him a question about what, what inspired, a, just an innocent question, what inspired the print of those pants? And he, you know, very bravely came out and said, you know, I'm HIV positive and that, th that design really spoke to me and that's what inspired that particular design. Um, there was another episode when a designer proposed to his significant other, um, a same-sex person on the show. There was the moment when we saw, I mean, it's just the microcosm of what happens in reality, right? Um, when we saw Ashley um, being a little bullied by the rest of the cast. So it's just moments that are not necessarily have anything to do with design, but what is happening in, all, in our culture, and it's kind of reflected right in front of us. Um, so it's been really a wonderful um, ride to be with uh, Project Runway on so many levels, not only in design, but in terms of, you know, what, what it, the, the human contact and what happens in the show is very real. And we have time for one more question, please. Hi. So uh, I was wondering uh, how you came up with the name of the app and uh, were you involved in the user experience or the design of the app at all? Well, I have to admit that it was first our code name, Project September, it kind of sounded a little stealth and that's how a lot of good new businesses begin. And we started testing it with men and women and they both loved it. And then I had that moment when I went to tell Nina about it, I'm like, oops. Project September, Project Runway. Do you mind? Is it okay? Um, but no, it stuck. People liked it, and um, and it turned out that it was memorable. And in this day and age, naming uh, business online where you have to think about the URL, the name in the app store, it's become so challenging that that's why everyone has these crazy names that are you can hardly remember or spell. So we liked it for that reason, and and it's here to stay. And our nod to you know, our own little take on the September issue. That's actually exactly what I thought of. And where can we get the app? Uh, it's right in the app store. So you can download it at Project September or visit our website, projectseptember.com. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here. Thank you for having us.